Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the top 20 celebration here tonight at Rensselaer Field. My name is John Fody. I'm the assistant principal. And I'm standing in for Mr. Ryan, who could not be with us tonight. Mr. Ryan puts a lot of time into this event, planning the event. And he also puts a lot of time in over the four years working with our top 20 students. And I know that he wishes he could be here, but unfortunately, he won't be here tonight. So I hope I can stand in here and uh, do a good job like he does every year. And I am definitely honored to be here tonight to kick off uh, this special event. There's a program on everyone's table, and I would recommend that you read that and get familiar with the agenda and details to know for the evening. A special thanks goes out to the East Hartford Board of Education, the Exchange Club, and our town council for many years of support in this, for this program. I'd like to uh, recognize Board Chairman Brian Hall this evening, Mayor Marsha LeClaire, and Council Chairman Rich Kehoe for their attendance. We appreciate their support. So I'm gonna, I'm not one for uh, speaking a long time, so you probably enjoy that. And um, so I'm gonna get right to it. Uh, over the years when I've sat on that side, uh, Mr. Ryan's always said this, this, tonight's about the kids. And I'm excited, as I am every year, to hear their story, to hear their journey, because we get to hear uh, their trials and tribulations throughout their um, academic and uh, social career, so to speak, at East Hartford High School. And it's an opportunity to find out about their friendships. It's about an opportunity to find out who their lifeline was during those four years. And it's also an opportunity to find out what their college choices and their career aspirations are. So I'm excited. And um, I basically want to say, uh, let's get going. But before I do, I'd like to um, bring someone up who's uh, very important to our school district. Um, he's a great leader. He's a charismatic speaker. And um, I know that he loves East Hartford. And that's our um, chairman, Mr. Brian Hall. <laughs> Mr. Quinnell thought it was him. Thank you, Mr. Forty, for uh, that great introduction. Uh, your evaluation will be done tomorrow, and it will be all five, so thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We're glad to be here in this beautiful venue. Of course, when this time of year comes, I get excited because this is basically our big kickoff for our graduation season. So we're here tonight to recognize your success in the four years at East Hartford High School. As board chairman, I get to brag about the students that we have in our district. And I especially get an opportunity to brag about our top 20 students. This is an occasion that I want to say the Exchange Club has done for 57 years. So I want to thank the Exchange Club for the support <laughs> that they've given us. And, and I don't know if you recognize students that there's a lot of work that goes behind the scene to be able to provide you with all the resources so that you can continue on to become successful adults and hopefully come back to the town of East Hartford. I'm going to speak on behalf of our Mayor, Marsha Claire. I know she's going to come up earlier, but the mayor and I were together on Monday night. And we both have a great working relationship together. We both love East Hartford. The mayor is the CEO of the town of East Hartford, and I oversee the board. And one of the things I like to say is I want to thank her personally for the support that she's given the East Hartford Public Schools at the time she's been in office and I've been in office. There's nothing greater than to have a mayor and a board chair that can work together for the good of our students. So I want to thank you, Mayor, as well. <laughs> also, students, you know you have a great principal, and unfortunately, uh, Matt can't be here this evening. Also, I, I got a phone call from Senator Tim Larson, who was supposed to be in attendance, and unfortunately, he had an unexpected emergency as well, but he sends his, his remarks in regards to you. But you're here tonight because of the time, hours, and the commitment and dedication that our administration and our, and our teachers give you. And I'm always proud to say that I have the best superintendent in the country. I call Nate Quinnell my super superintendent, so I want to recognize the superintendent as well. So as you know, a lot goes into it, but it's not about us, it's about you. 
But I will not leave this podium without first thanking your parents. I want to thank your parents. I want to thank your guardians. I want to thank your siblings. I want to thank your family for the support that they've given you in regards to allowing you to be successful and to have achieved this top 20 recognition. This doesn't go away. This is something that goes, of course, on your college application. This is going to go on your job resume. This will follow you. This is even bragging rights that when you become parents that you can brag to your kids and say, hey, listen, I was a top 20 student. I challenge you to do the same thing. So I want to thank the parents and students. I want you to join me in giving your parents a round of applause for what they've done as well. So in closing, I want to say this. I was at GNC the other day in Glastonbury. And uh, I, I try to keep myself in a little bit of shape. Don't let the grades fool you. Uh, but, I, but I do try to keep in shape a little. And I was in GNC the other day. And as I was in GNC, I stopped in there three or four times a week. Honestly, I do. I overheard a conversation of a young man who had on a Yukon t-shirt. This just happened on Tuesday. And as I'm listening to him talk to one of the salespeople, he mentioned he had just graduated from UConn. OK, UConn just had their graduation. And he mentioned the fact that he got his degree in, in marketing and that he was going to go look for a job in the Chicago area. But this is when my ear really got large, is he said, I'm proud to say that I graduated four years after graduating from East Hartford High School. I was ready to pay for his stuff that he had on the counter at that time. <laughs> And I walked over to him and I, I said, I want to introduce myself to you. And I wasn't dressed like I was dressed right now. You know, I, I understand now my mother used to say, I never leave the house without looking appropriate because I never know who I'm going to run into. So I had on a pair of shorts and some slides and a t-shirt. And I told him, I said, I'm the board chairman of East Hartford. And this kid looked at me like, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, and I said, no, honestly, I said, I'm the board chairman. I says, uh, I'm, I'm proud of you, and, and why are you going to Chicago? He said, because there's no jobs here in Connecticut. He says, you know, Mr. Hall, I told him my name. He said, I really would love to stay in, in Connecticut. He says, but there's no jobs here. And one of the things, and, and, and the mayor can attest to this and any other of the elected officials that are here, you know, we're trying to fight to keep the talent that you have here in the state of Connecticut. We're really striving to make sure, and there's an election coming up. Those of you that are 18, I hope you've registered to vote. And we really do want you to go away and have your college experience, but I'm hoping you do come back. I'm hoping you do prepare yourselves that you're willing to fill the shoes that we're standing in right now. And I had about a half hour conversation with him. We exchanged numbers. We exchanged emails. And by the time I got home, this young man, because I made a promise to him, I said, I will help you in every way that I can because you're one of mine. You're an East Hartford High School Hornet. So I'm going to do everything I possibly can. And he sent me his resume. And I looked at his resume and gave him a couple of suggestions in regards to making it a little bit tighter. And we've been in communication every day since this. So I say this publicly to you. I'm here to serve not only the adults that are in East Hartford, I've also stood in this seat to serve you as well to make sure that you have all the resources you need and are not going away. So if you need me, feel free to reach out to me. And I think I can say that from the superintendent on down. We're very proud of you. This is a great event. It gets me in the mood for knowing that you're going to continue to be, do great things, become successful adults. Again, parents, I congratulate you uh, on the job well done. I appreciate the fact that you let your children come to the public school system because I know uh, there are people out there that feel that public schools aren't the greatest way to educate our children. So I really thank you from the bottom of my heart to allow us to not only adore your students but to also prepare your children to become the future leaders of this great country. Thank you very much. And so, that leads us to the next um, portion of the agenda, and that's we're going to eat. We're going to eat. So our wait staff will come to the table. They will tell you when you can go up and, um, and serve yourself. The only thing is just uh, be patient because we have a lot of people that need to eat. Okay? Thank you. Let's have a great, great night.
Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, top 20 students, honored guests. I'm David Case, longtime board member of the Exchange Club of East Hartford, and my wife Susan and I are honored to be representing Exchange tonight at this, the 58th East Hartford High's Top 20 Student Awards Recognition Dinner. Yes. Uh, Our principal, Matt Ryan, uh, asked me to give a little bit of the background of exchange and of uh, this program that we're at tonight. You see, Exchange Club of East Hartford is part of a national club. And uh, this organization, uh, whose national project is the prevention of child abuse. So we support the Kids Safe Prevention Center over in Rockville that serves 14 towns. Now, Exchange also values the importance of great education, strong educational systems and programs such as we have right here in East Hartford. Hence, our support of the top 20. Now, over 50 years ago, a young principal, or young teacher at that time, from Burnside School, Mr. Joseph Silvestro, started this program. And as a leader of our group, he made sure that the top 20 awards dinner was always at the top of the club's agenda. Now, on his committee were these three great educators. The, the first principal of the Langford School, Anthony Crosin. Mr. Val Magro was very well known and liked throughout the system. And and um, our own East Hartford High's vice principal joined him a little later, coach and vice principal and friend of exchange, Michael Liapez. Now, a little later down the road, two other guys joined him, science teacher uh, Charles Nystrom and yours truly, Dave Case. Okay, and so that brings you up to, oh, right to current. Anyway, what I'd like to really let you know about is that tonight we're here at Rentschler because this program is about you kids. And you know, your principal took Mr. Silvestro's dream. It took Mr. Silvestro five years to get the Exchange Club to do this program. And then he ran it for 50 years. Isn't that great? And here we are another eight years later. Because, and your principal took that and turned it into his own dream. Because for years we were at the Marco Polo. But you see, things change. We find, and I think the faculty will agree with me, that in the last couple of years, here we have much more room for all your friends, all your fans, your family, and the faculty. And after all, the faculty and the folks from the town and the state, well, they're your fans too. And it's all about you. Tonight you can see all the fans that you have wishing you well for the future. And tonight, I just want you to sit back, relax, and know how proud the Exchange Club is that you allow us to be part of your celebration. Thank you. Now, while I flip hats, just hang on one second, please. It's, it's now time, uh, and I'd like to now go into the introduction. Tonight, from the town, we have with us the Honorable Mayor, Marsha LeClaire. <laughs> town Council, the Chairperson, Mr. Richard Kehoe. He's brought with him tonight Mark Weinberg, Ram Abarastaria, and I believe uh, Linda 
is also here, right? The Daruzzo. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, Shelby Brown. And let's see. Uh, Joe Carlson. And where are you? Um, Esther Clark. Now, from the Board of Education tonight, we have with us the chairperson, uh, Brian Hall. And with him tonight is Doris Roberts and Tyrone Harris. Our educators tonight from the East Hartford High School that are with us tonight from the guidance department, we have the director, Frank Staples. And he's brought with him uh, Ray Jordan and Clevin St. Just. Now, from administration, we have our, our three vice principals. House nine, Mr. John Fody. House 10, Mr. Joe Leroy. And, uh, of course, House 12, Mrs. Marion. Now, tonight's a little different. Uh, someone, of course, is missing. But tonight, um, we'll be introducing some of our guests very shortly. Um, but now, also, from uh, the rest of our folks that are our educators, we have with us from World Language, Liz Bizzizi. And from PE Health, Tracy Stefano. And we do not want to forget Mr. Ed Quick from the Social Studies Department. Now it's time for the main part of our program. The reason we're here, the recognition of our top 20 students. And to lead us into the next portion of our program, uh, a young lady that, and I could call her a young lady, was a, a great, a very good uh, social studies teacher. I've known her quite a while. I think she was even at the middle school for a little while. Um, this is Michelle Marion. Good evening. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. I would li actually like to start with the introductions and invite um, Mayor Marshall LeClerc up to say a few words. I was looking at the program, and I noticed that I was down a little farther, so I wasn't prepared, but thank you, Michelle Marion. Uh, first of all, what an exciting time for me to be here, to look out into the audience, to see the children of our community, the young adults of our community, the families, the teachers, and recognize your accomplishments, and really to thank the teachers of East Harvard High School, the leadership of East Harvard High School, the superintendent of East Harvard High School, and the Board of Education of East Hartford High School, along with the town council. We are a collective group, a team of people, and I think our fabric of our community is weaved when we all work together and we can really strengthen each of our relationships to propel each other forward. I'm just really delighted to be here. I remember now it seems um, 20 years ago when I was a parent uh, and my daughter was a top 20 recipient and it was an, a wonderful time in our family's life. And I remember my daughter being anxious about going away to school. I remember the tr you know, trials and tribulations coupled with the excitement of shopping for new items for her room. Um, but I also remember as a parent feeling um, very emotional at the time that it was a time when you were allowing your child to leave the nest and you knew that their life in East Hartford wasn't just um, the end of their high school career, 
but it really was the first steps towards the life of their future. And as you watch your children grow over the next four years, they will become very independent of us and we form a new relationship with them. And we still sit in amazement of the opportunities that they garner, of the work that they do, of the challenges that they overcome, and the life that they're building for themselves. And we take pride as parents and educators, I'm sure, that we have had one small part in making this young child, this person that we love, given every opportunity to fulfill themselves as individuals. And I trust that you will look back, as I have, um, now that my daughter is approaching 38, and say, I did good, we did good, and collectively, the town of East Hartford has done amazingly well for my daughter, who was educated kindergarten through 12th grade here, for her educational experience, her college experience, for the organizations that she went to work for, the opportunities that were opened up to her because she was opened up to them, to li living in places all over the world and building herself a career and a life that has taken her to places that I only dreamed she could go. So I want to congratulate each and every one of you today because the work that you have done, you've kept your head down, you've kept your one foot in front of the other. I know it wasn't always easy to balance home life with work life, with school life, with the challenges that it is being a young person in today's world, but you've done it. You've done it with grace and you've done it with dignity. And to all of you, I am very, very proud of your accomplishments. And I think we all collectively are anxious to see you continue to grow and really experience the world. Because today, the world is a much smaller place than it was years ago. We can travel from one side of the US to the other. We can travel from one continent to the other and know that the world is open to exploring you and you exploring it. So congratulations again and thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Thank you, Mayor. Now I'd like to call up a guy that's very dedicated to the town of East Hartford. They even call him Mr. East Hartford, Mr. Rich Kehoe. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I stand here today um, as uh, chairman of the uh, town council uh, here in East Hartford and, and very proud to <clears throat> not only be a resident of the town of East Hartford, but also a graduate of East Hartford High School. And uh, I look out and, and I just see um, the, uh, the pride uh, of the families that are here uh, and, and the friends. Uh, because of what it takes to accomplish the goal of being in the top 20, especially in a very large uh, high school like East Hartford High. Um, as uh, Mayor uh, LeClaire indicated uh, earlier, we as a group, whether it, uh, it's the mayor, the town council, and the board of education, uh, we do work collectively because we understand the importance of education not only to the people of East Hartford but to the community of East Hartford. Um, and I will point out uh, that you have here tonight eight out of the nine uh, town council members. Um, I know that um, Dave had uh, mentioned uh, most, uh, I did not hear Caroline Torres uh, being recognized, but Caroline is also here tonight. <clears throat> And so um, I think that is a symbol of, of how much we appreciate uh, what the Board of Education does in the quality of the educational system here in the town of East Hartford. So as you go forth, uh, top 20 members, uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, the uh, town of East Hartford and more importantly the schools uh, of East Hartford uh, have supported you over the years and uh, be very proud of being from the town of East Hartford. Thank you. Next up for us tonight, 
I'm told we have one of the youngest superintendents in the state, and I think that still rings true, doesn't it? Well, no? Doesn't hold? Well, anyway, our rising star, Mr. Nate Quinnell. That's not true anymore, Mr. Case, unfortunately. You know, I, I, that was true a few years ago. But uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, really appreciative of our, our mayor, uh, town council, uh, board of ed, and all the other folks who came out to join us here tonight. And really appreciative of our high school administration for the phenomenal job. And faculty are here, teachers. Uh, thank you all very much for being here tonight to celebrate tonight with us. Uh, tonight is, is without doubt a showcase night for East Hartford. Here we are in Rensselaer Field. Uh, you know, home of the Huskies, but more tonight, home of the Hornets. And uh, this is a great place for us to be because we're here to celebrate uh, you as students. And we're here to celebrate your accomplishments. And uh, to be named in the top 20 is a really big deal. What's funny for me is I kind of circulated the room before uh, the meal. I had a chance to go to some tables. And, and it, uh, it wasn't just one, but a couple moms let me know, I saw you here two years ago. I'm back. And uh, so that's a family pride thing. I mean, we got the innocents. I think that, I mean, this is it. No more dinners for the innocents. This is the last one we got. But uh, that's something we are super proud of here in East Hartford. Tradition of excellence. The tradition of, of kids finding a way to win. Of kids finding a way to come together and persevere and beat the odds. And have incredible, incredible bright futures. You know, I'm, I'm actually really glad that they shut the monitors off that were scrolling your pictures. Because I couldn't listen to anything when those things were scrolling by. And I couldn't pay attention. Because all I could see was your faces. And, and Rohan, I love the one with your hand and your chin like this. They didn't have anything like that when I was in high school. I wish they had. But I liked even more than the wonderful pictures were the colleges that you guys are going to. We're talking about UVA. We're talking about Yale. We're talking about Southern. We're talking about UConn. Uh, that's something you've accomplished here in East Hartford. And uh, I'm so proud of you, Top 20, for what you've done. Um, those of you who know me a little bit know that I love metaphors. I mean, I, I absolutely, I turn everything into a metaphor. So much to the point, like, something will be going on in our house and my, my son will go, oh my god, here comes one. So, he's not here tonight, so I'm going to give you a metaphor. And uh, the metaphor I would say is I was sitting, listening, and thinking about what I wanted to say to you. You know, I had the kind of the... And I got another speech lined up for graduation, so don't worry, I'll get another shot at this. Uh, I was thinking about the metaphor of this, this boat, this really incredible sailboat that's sitting, sitting on the ocean. And uh, it's sitting there, its sail is full of wind, it's clean, it's crisp, it's just ready to go places, it's ready to go take on the world. That boat is you. Uh, you are that boat who has endless possibility. There's nothing holding you back. There's incredible power behind you. That, that power is the choices you've made, the commitments you've been willing to keep, the hard work and the understanding of, of long-term versus short-term satisfaction. You figure that out. Uh, that's you in the top 20. But if you stop for one second right there, and, I, and that's a really, really powerful image. I, I, I don't know, I've, I've never been on a sailboat. I've seen a lot of movies about them. Uh, hopefully you can kind of go with me on this a little bit. But if you think about the boat for a second, and the boat forgot what was underneath it for a moment, that would really be a foolish boat. And, and the same for us guys. Underneath us is this incredible power of an ocean, of a tide. And a rising tide that lifts all ships. And your rising tide, your ocean underneath you right now, is, your, is the people sitting around you right now. And that's your parents, that's your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your English teacher, your high school principal, your board of education, your town council, your mayor. That's that rising tide that's touched you in so many ways you can't even necessarily define it, but they've carried you and they've lifted you. And how foolish of a boat to ever forget that? How foolish of a boat to not remember what's lifting them is this tide underneath you. And so it is, if you're still with me in this metaphor right now, and I haven't completely lost you, so it is for us. You know, let's remember the power that we've harnessed, the power we've harnessed with success. And let's really remember this tide and this, this power of an ocean that's underneath us that's carrying us. And let's rely on that ocean. Let's come back and seek the powers of those who have, who have given so much for your success. You know, a little word of gratitude tonight goes a long way. A little word of appreciation and humility, it goes an awful long way. And I really encourage you to remember that the tide of East Hartford, the community of East Hartford, it's always going to be behind you. It's always going to be cheering for you, whether it's at the GNC counter 
or it's here at Rensselaer Safe Field, the freezing cold game that we're all at. We're here for you, we're cheering for you, and we're super proud of you, and I'm really glad I had a little piece of that. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Quinnell. Um, was Jason Rojas able to get here? I guess our legislative team is busy in Hartford, but Representative Jeffrey Curry, the former uh, lead of the Board of Education, he was able to get here with the proclamation. So I just wanted you to know that he did come, he did drop it off for you, and at some point we'll be able to read it, but we're not going to read it right now. Uh, but we are very appreciative of that. And now, I just wanted you to know that Exchange Club, we do the introductions the way that we do them because we want you folks to know who's here for you and what a great representation you have had tonight. Um, now it's time to present the students with the awards. And I do call up Michelle Marion, grade 12 assistant principal. That's Miranda. Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Case. I liked uh, when you called me a young lady, though, a little bit better. Okay. Uh, good evening again, everyone. And I'm going to start before we start with the student presentations with a few statistics about our top 20 tonight. These were shared with me from Mr. Ryan, and each year we do do this. And I just wanted to say some things and share them with the families. So this year of our top 20 students, AP courses that were taken from this class, we had a 20% increase in the AP courses that were taken. Uh, 139 courses among all of you this year. Yes. <laughs> Our test scores this year, um, SAT test scores and CAP scores have maintained at a high level average. Um, the SAT was an average at 1280 this year and 15 of the 20 earned a 5 on our capped science test this year. Well, this in the 40. <laughs> As for our clubs and activities, this group has um, participated in 135 clubs or activities over their high school career. That's a 19% increase for this group. Mm -hmm. And then this is interesting, attending East Hartford schools from kindergarten through 12th grade, 10 out of the 20 did attend from kindergarten through 12th grade. Four more attended um, from K to six, went somewhere for middle school, and then came back to us, because they realized they should, uh, and finished here at the high school. And then six moved into the district, somewhere between first grade and fifth grade. Okay, so those are just where everybody came from. Scholarship-wise, now that's Tuesday morning, so I'm not gonna give too much away, but 90% of the top 20 students received renewable merit scholarships this year. So a statistic that's not on here is probably the number of hours that all of your young students spent uh, poring over homework and committed to these clubs, these activities, people counting on them because they were the leaders and the voice of our school. And so that really can't, we can't put a number on that per se, but I'm sure your families might be able to do that at some point. So thank you and congratulations to the students in the top 20. As your assistant principal, I just have to say that I am also very proud of the growth that I've seen over the past three years. So on to the student presentations. What's going to happen tonight is we'll call randomly, so you really won't know. I know that's stressing Thomas out, but um, I'm going to call a name and you will come up to the podium and you'll be able to say a few words to everyone that's here tonight and then at that point you'll move right to my left here and you will um, take a picture and receive your gift your award and the citation okay so 
now that we are, oh, and parents, please come up and take your own photos. Uh, Mr. Campbell will be taking photos as well, and he can certainly send those out to the families, but feel free to come up and take your own picture. So our first person to speak tonight is going to be Jack Corcoran. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd just like to start off by saying thank you to the Exchange Club, the Board of Ed, and the Town Council and everybody else involved for putting this on. <clears throat> um, and I think it's safe to say that me and the peers who are present tonight are very thankful for this opportunity um, to be recognized for our academic success. <clears throat> Um, so walking in the doors of East Hartford High School on August 27, 2014, it was obviously a little daunting for me and probably everybody else here. <clears throat> um, because when you go into high school, you hear about all these stereotypes, like you're going to get shoved in a locker or something. Um, and luckily, none of those horrible cliches are true, at least not for me. Um, <clears throat> hopefully not for anybody um, else. Um, but like our uh, superintendent, um, I also like to make some metaphors, I think, Ms. Shaker. Um, <laughs> and I like to think of high school as like an amusement park with a lot of different <clears throat> paths to take, a lot of different rides to ride, and always a good time. Um, and obviously, while there have been moments of struggle and annoyance, um, you know, we all took a bunch of AP classes, we know how that goes, um, <clears throat> it's honestly been a high school has been a place for astonishing memories and um, I've made some incredible friends, met some hard-working and dedicated teachers and um, I've joined great clubs and organization and in conjunction all three of those things have helped play a pivotal role in supporting who I am growing to be. So I'd like to give a few shout outs now, um, specific shout outs anyways, to some of those who um, have really um, impacted me through my high school career. Um, first, I'll start off by saying thank you to uh, Mrs. Marion and uh, Mr. Marchucci and the rest of the Connections Plus um, teachers who uh, really helped me grow into more of a confident leader during our summer leadership institutes that I attended over um, the majority of my summers here at East Hartford High School. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, two uh, special teachers, um, Mrs. Edge and Ms. Cutcomp. She's, she's somewhere. She's over there. Um, <clears throat> who were really honest, insightful, and amusing teachers for me throughout my um, multiple years here at East Hartford High School. And the last teacher I'd like to thank is Mrs. White, who I brought tonight. Um, <clears throat> she was definitely one of the most um, influential teachers that I had. Um, throughout my high school career. Um, she was my Spanish teacher for sophomore and junior year and she made turning uh, learning Spanish, which obviously <clears throat> as not speaking Spanish was not the easiest for me, um, into something unforgettable and actually kind of easy. Um, her style of teaching was like no other teacher I've ever had before and she had many helpful and unique strategies along the way that helped me um, <clears throat> learn Spanish. Um, talking about that Big Brother game sophomore year. <laughs> I was robbed. Anyways, <clears throat> in addition to my teachers, I'd like to thank um, all my friends and family, specifically the ones who I brought here tonight, um, Jasmine, Jensie, and Ashley, um, and my mother, of course. Um, um, your presence tonight means the world. And um, whether you're here or not here tonight, or whether I just met you this year, or I've known you since kindergarten, um, no matter what, you've always encouraged me to never let me get too hard on myself and always stay confident and just be who I am. So that means a lot also. Um, and I know that for some of you, and you know, maybe some people who aren't here tonight, high school will just soon fade into the back of their minds and they'll forget about <clears throat> everything they've done and just kind of focus on college. But for me, I know that I will always carry the lessons and the friendships that I've made here at East Hartford High School very close to my heart and um, I feel extremely prepared by this expansive amusement park um, uh, to move on to the University of Connecticut where I will study psychology, so thank you. Is it okay? 
Okay, next student I'm going to call up is Thomas Marignano. Good evening. Hello, can you hear me? Good evening. It's been a genuine pleasure to attend East Harvard High School for the last four years. When I was in the eighth grade, I had my heart set on attending SEBA, but I'm glad to say that that was the best thing that never happened to me <laughs> because I never would have been able to work with any of the wonderful teachers here at East Harvard High School. In my time here, I've been able to participate in three honor society, take various AP classes, work a part-time job, and participate in tons of extracurricular activities. All these things did help me really to find my path. I'm excited to attend the University of Connecticut this fall. I will be majoring in um, political science, and I hope to later move on to law school and pursue a career in corporate law. I'd like to thank everyone who supported me, my family, my teachers, administrators, guidance counselors, and everyone else who had faith in me and helped me to succeed. Love you all. Thank you. Leanna Morissette. I have a poem that I wrote called Everything Happens for a Reason. Four years ago, I came into East Hartford High School ready to grow. Honors classes with my friends, the projects and lessons learned having no end. Freshman year, I joined the musical, incorporating myself into the music department flow. There, I met Ms. Scott, my net for ideas and creative projects, my advisor, and my outlet for progressive thoughts. Her encouragements to join a cappella groups and to learn to sing alone brought me out of my comfort zone. The shaking, quaking, and decision making improved my confidence in front of crowds and gave me more motivation. Becoming Triumph President served as a precedent for my future. As a potential sociology major, I learned that leadership is in my nature. In other words, I have learned Chinese for the past eight years, an opportunity gifted to me by the East Hartford High School system, as well as the Sunset Ridge system and the middle school. As I plan to carry this language with me into the adult world, I prepare for the open doors that I thought were only possible in my dream world. Honors and AP classes offered to me without the price only increased my opportunity for knowledge and allowed me to rise. College is only a step away. Uh, much thanks to those uh, who helped me along the way. In the East Hartford High School system, I learned that everything happens for a reason. Thank you. Afua Kumsum is next. Hello. <laughs> I was just getting a sound check. Hello. <laughs> Hello, my name is Afua Kumsum. As many of you know, Today, I stand in front of you all as an honored member of the top 20 in the East Hartford community. Since freshman year, I've dreamt of reaching this significant part of my life. The journey to get to this point has been rewarding, although it hasn't always been easy. It all started in the spring of 2006 when I arrived in America from my home country of Ghana. Coming to a new country and having to assimilate to a new culture was challenging. At only the age of five, I've hoped to, I hope to make my parents proud and aspire to follow the American dream that brought us here. 
This dream nearly came to a halt in kindergarten when I faced the possibility of staying back. I had to go to summer school. <laughs> this dream nearly came, oh, I already read that. <laughs> Sorry. The journey to get, oh, wait. Oh, okay. This obstacle only forced me to work harder to ensure that I would get ahead in life. The journey to get here wasn't done on my own, however. It was the people in my life who pushed me to follow this American dream. First, I'm thankful of every member of the top 20 and many of my friends who are here tonight. While I'm excited to move on to a new journey, I will forever miss many of the people in this room. I've, na I've known many of you since sixth grade, and many of you have made me laugh, cry, yell, but most, most importantly, you've all touched me. Even when I was drowning in chemistry homework or having an emotional breakdown because I lost my phone for, my, for the third time that semester, you all kept me mostly sane. I'm also thankful of my parents who have raised me to be the person I can be. They have nurtured, supported, and have continued to love me throughout this journey. They continue to call me out when I'm wrong, but also help me learn from my mistakes. Without them, I wouldn't be the person I am. I'm also thankful of my brother for giving me rides sometimes. <laughs> and most important, after my parents, I'm thankful of all the teachers and, and administrators who have encouraged me and fostered my growth throughout my years of being in the East Hartford High School or East Hartford Public School System, including my fifth grade teacher, Ms. Bulldog, who I invited here because uh, she lost, she left a lasting impact on my life. I remember when I was a freshman and I envisioned being here, I always knew I'd invite her. And I may be biased, but I believe that the teachers in East Hartford are definitely the best in the country. I'm, okay, you can clap. <laughs> I am lucky to have had many of the ones here tonight, including my current and former math teachers, Ms. Bergeron and Ms. Blaisdell, who have inspired me to pursue a career in actuarial science. They and others like them have helped me mold, helped mold me to be the person I am today and continue to push me to live the American dream. Finally, I'm thankful of all the experiences I've had, both good and bad. I've learned so much from numerous leadership positions at Connections Plus. Thank you, Ms. Marion and Mr. Martucci, like uh, Jack said. And I'm thankful for all the experience that sports and music has brought me. Joining badminton and tennis has helped me form bonds with people I would have never met outside of those theme teams. Leaving East Hartford will be bittersweet. While I'm excited to join UConn's honors program as an astro science major, but it'll be hard to begin a new journey like when I came to America. But I know all my experiences in East Hartford have prepared me for my future. Thank you. Next is Tazneem Islam. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. Okay. Um, the image of a phoenix. Wait, can you guys hear me? Okay. Sorry. The image of a phoenix rising from the ashes has been something that we've all, at one point or another, have seen or heard being talked about, whether it be in a book that we've read or a movie that we've watched. For most of us, this image of the phoenix has been a concept that we found <clears throat> both mythical and foreign, and we've most likely not spent more than a few moments of our time analyzing for its deeper meaning. However, what many of us may have never realized is that the concept of the phoenix is actually not foreign to us at all. Because at one point or another, all of us have or will be like a phoenix, rising from the events of our lives that have made us feel down to be stronger than we have ever been before. And for many of us, that experience will vary in magnitudes and we'll probably end up going through that process multiple times throughout the course of our lives. For me, my experience as a student in East Hartford High School has been the precursor in helping me realize that there is a strength and potential in me that I've never even imagined about before. And it's fair to say that the amount of growth I've experienced in this place, both as a student and individual, has been absolutely enormous. I remember back to the beginning of my freshman year of high school, 
when I had no idea about what I wanted to do in the future or even what type of student I wanted to be. Sure, my performance during that year and the next year gave me a confidence boost regarding my academic abilities, but that was all broken down in the beginning of my junior year of high school when I had a breakdown because I felt like the course that of AP class I was taking that year was way too much for me because I was pretty much nearly failing all of them in the beginning. Um, okay. During that time, my self-doubt hit a peak that had never hit before in my life. And I was ready to take the easy way out and drop all the classes that, um, to get ones that I felt were better suited for me. I don't remember why I didn't end up doing that, and quite frankly, the reason doesn't even matter. But honestly, not doing so and sticking through with those classes had been the best decision I made, in my, I made during that year. Maybe my experience wasn't as dramatic as a big bird rising from the dead, but after being able to overcome my self-doubt and getting a grip on what I previously thought would have been far beyond me, I realized for the first time that I needed to start having more faith in myself because there was more potential in me that I gave myself credit for. It is because of East Hartford High School, my family, and my friends that I've been able to go from once constantly doubting my abilities to now having faith in my future success as both as a student and in, an individual at Yale University, a place that I once never even imagined having the chance to attend. As exciting as it is being able to graduate soon and be finally done with high school, which is a feeling I'm sure the rest of the seniors in this room can agree to, it saddens me because I know that for many of us, it'll be a while before we once again find such a large establishment that has been so welcoming, caring, and genuine to everyone it has interacted with. In short, I honestly don't believe there's any way I can thank everyone in this in East Hartford High School, the staff and everyone for everything they've done for me and the other students in this room. That is all and thank you. Payel Patel is next. So my name is Payel. I have been studying in East Hartford since I was in fourth grade. Before that, I used to live in India where I started my study in a different language. Then when I came here, I barely knew any English. And my dad really used to help me with all my homework in, when I was in elementary school. So I would like to thank my dad and my family for that. And my teachers in elementary, middle, and high school were amazing. And I would especially thank Ms. Martucci for encouraging me to grow to my fullest and helping me through all of my years of high school. Right now, I'm part of Connection Plus, National Honor Society, and I played badminton. Now, I'm, when I, I'm planning to go to UConn for the School of Pharmacy to become a pharmacist. Thank you. Next up is Jada Daly. Hello everyone. As some of you know, this morning I woke up and I did not have a voice, so just bear with me. Um, so my name is Jada Daly, and I'd like to start by thanking everyone who made this day possible. I'd like to thank my teachers, my family, the faculty at East Hartford High School for just pushing us to make it here, to be in the top 20. Um, when I got to East Harvard High School, I didn't really know what to expect. I was really involved in middle school, but my freshman year, I decided to focus on academics and soccer. I regret that decision now because there are so many opportunities. I now I'm involved in so many things, National Honor Society, Math Club, which I actually founded with one of my friends, Future Teachers Club, and many more. Soccer, out of all, all of those um, activities, has been the most important to me. It served as an extra motiva motivation for maintaining my grades. It's allowed me to form new friendships and um, mentor incoming freshmen who are getting shorter every single year. <laughs> they look so much younger. And it also built my character and taught me leadership. As I am number seven, I could tell you all oh, the seven things that I learned during soccer season. But one of the greatest lessons I learned was 
Even though things may seem difficult, in the moment, never stop working because the hard work really does pay off. Another thing I learned, um, another important thing about East Harvard High School was its connections with other programs. Through the, my computer applications class, I was able to be in a junior achievement program where I was able to start a business with other students in the state. We called our company Wire Desire, and through that program, I was actually able to be the vice president of the marketing department, and we actually sold our products to people in our community, in our family, and in our school. That was an amazing experience, and it showed me how much I liked business, and it created the motivation and the base for my drive to become an actuary. To pursue this goal, I will be studying in the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania. I hope one day to return to this community and start a soccer club for underprivileged minority youths who don't have the opportunity to play at this higher level of premier soccer. I hope to be that person for them to go to, for them to see that they can do this, that there's nothing that's stopping them from reaching their goals and from showcasing their talents. Until I return, hopefully, I will always have the great memories that I made at East Harvard High School, from our middle school carnival to our 9-H field trips to stressing out about an essay that's due at midnight that none of us have really started. <laughs> and, um, but thank you again to all the teachers, to everyone that's here, and congratulations to all the other members of the top 20. Our hard work paid off. Next up is Sean Mallon. Oh, I'll take that off. Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> um, before I start, I think uh, we should get another round of applause to the East Harbor High School staff, the Exchange Club, and the administrators that are here tonight. So. Four years I've been at East Harvard High School. Wow, it flew by actually pretty quickly. It's, it's May, right? I'm pretty sure it's May. I'm pretty sure it's May. Yeah, it's May. <laughs> ah, man, it's been pretty exhausting, and the journey here has been magnificent. Uh, tonight, I would like to share with you a little quick story um, how I entered East Harvard High School and how it has shaped me to who be who I am today. Uh, starting in East Hartford High School, I really wanted to get involved. I really wanted to do something because there were so many opportunities at East Hartford High School, so many clubs, so many sports. Um, I, so, I, was, I was thinking about sports, and then I was like, no. I, I remember running club at Two Rivers. I was not fast. <laughs> so I looked at clubs. I looked through the list, and I was looking down. I see, like, or I'm like, no, or like debate club, no, or like some other club that I scrolled down the list and I was thinking, no. So I was thinking, why don't I start my own club? Because I knew that's, that's, that's something that East River High School provided to me. And I went out of my way to get an application to start my own club. I looked at the list, 10 people. 10 people were needed to sign in order to make a club. I didn't even have any 10 friends. <laughs> and. I, but I really wanted this club, and I pushed myself to go out and interact with people and get those 10 signatures I needed to create my club. And by the end of the month that I received this application, I may, finally made a club called the Philosophy Club, where I can open myself up to debate and discuss ideas, whether political, social, or just everyday life, with people I know who I can trust, and are open to talk about these ideas. And through that, I was able to open myself up more and talk to more people and get myself even more involved. Because of this club that I created, I was able to do things such as NHS, become a section leader of the band, and go out of my way to even get a job at Aetna. And, the, because, of the, and because of this, and because of East Hartford, I was able to stand here tonight and talk about this with you. So thank you, East Hartford, and thank you all.
Next will be Bridget Norty. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start off by thanking the East Hartford Exchange Club for putting together this great event for all of these years that it has been running. And I would also like to thank all the Town Council, Board of Education, and the administration members who are here to support me and my peers tonight. I've had the opportunity of being a student representative on the board for two years, and it has helped me realize all of the hard work put in and the difficult decisions that have often been, have to be made for the district as a whole. So a special thank you to all of you. If I could describe my high school experience as anything, it would be amazed that someone told me to complete with only half of a map. I walked into the building the first day of my freshman year, kind of feeling like I had a pretty good idea of what was gonna happen and how things were gonna turn out. Having two older brothers, one who graduated from EHHS in 2010 and one who was a senior at SEBA at the time, I was convinced that I knew what was in store, but to say the least, I was wrong. There have been so many things that have crossed my path in high school that I could have never expected, both positive and negative. Some of the negatives being realizing I'm not as great at math as I thought I was, um, stressing out over AP classes, SATs, and college, and finally, discovering that those who you start a journey with may not always be there to finish it with you. And although all of these pose to be difficult dealing with at some points, there have been so many other great memories and experiences that I've been a part of over these past four years. I'll never forget coming up with the HT Smart Fridge with my Toshiba project group freshman year with Logan and Christian, or navigating through the woods blindfolded during a Summer Connections Plus activity, or even the last time I led the band to the field for a football game. I definitely will always remember all of the great and unexpected friendships and bonds that I've made, especially the ones that became the strongest within these last few months. In conclusion, I would like to give out a few more thank yous. To my parents, thank you for, so much for always supporting me throughout all of my years of schooling and making sacrifices for both me and my brothers. Also, thank you for buying ice cream to this day whenever I do well in school, even though I'm technically an adult now. <laughs> to my brothers, David and Justin, thank you for being a sense of comic relief even when you weren't trying and for always setting, setting an example of what it means to be a great student, leader, and friend. To Mrs. Blaisdell, my guest here tonight, thank you for your unwavering patience and kindness that you showed while I was at, in your pre-calc class last year. I know it was probably frustrating to deal with my um, pre-calc class that had very strong personalities, as you all know. Um, so thank you so much, and I appreciate all you do and your dedication. And to Mr. Martucci, thank you so much for just believing in me, often more than I believed in myself, for letting me manage the badminton and softball teams, and for always having some joke or story to tell, even though they weren't funny half of the time. <laughs> I truly appreciate everything all of you have done for me over my time at this high school. Without all of you and my faith, I have no idea how I would have done it. One thing that I like to tell people is that I may not talk a lot, but that doesn't mean I don't have a lot to say. And four years ago, the latter part of that statement wouldn't be understood by many. But having the opportunity to gain leadership positions as the student council president, triumph vice president, and one of the senior drum majors of the marching band, I'm sure that this will now be known. As I continue my educational journey in the fall at the University of Virginia majoring in psychology, I'm sure that everything that I've learned and gained here at EHHS will be a great asset to my future. Thank you. Next is Johnson Hong. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Johnson Hong. Um, and I would first like to thank um, everyone who's a part of East, the East Hartford Public School Systems, the um, Exchange Club, and everyone else who's helped me along the way, including my friends, family, and all of my teachers. Um, tonight, I wanted to highlight something that made my experience in school um, very successful, and that would be music. I started um, playing the violin in third or fourth grade, and that was something that allowed me to really challenge my skills as a person, uh, whether it would be studying really hard pieces or anything else. I would eventually continue to pick up choir, and both of those things together led me to do musicals. Um, I remember my first musical, like it was yesterday, was Pirates, the musical, R. <laughs> 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 
And what I really enjoyed about the whole experience with musicals is that it really leads kids from all different types of backgrounds, whether it be age, ethnicity, or ability, to come together to create one full show for how many nights and to put it all on for everyone else, just like how you all have helped us backstage. And I really enjoyed meeting all these people, learning lines, choreography, singing, and every little shebang. And it really got me to push me out of my comfort zone. So I was able to learn how to project, how to talk to people, and how to really get out there. So this eventually did help me a lot with uh, going into high school. When I went to high school, I didn't know a lot of people besides the people that I hung out with for several years. So joining Annie the Musical freshman year with a lot of people helped me to get to know the upperclassmen and my fellow freshmen who all had the same interest in music. And that would, lead, that would lead me to a community where I knew that I would be accepted and supported no matter what I did. So music has definitely made me more successful, which is why I will be pursuing um, the road to becoming a doctor at UConn next year in the fall. Thank you. Lauren Crooks. Good evening, everyone. This is not adjusted. Take it out. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Crooks, and next year I'll be attending UConn and pursuing a degree in applied mathematics. Every time I tell someone that I'm a math major, the response I usually get is, wow, good for her. Or, what is she thinking? But the truth is, ever since elementary school, I have always loved math and knew I would go into, field, go into a field that involved crunching numbers. However, I really didn't discover my true ambition for pursuing a math major until this past summer. During my junior year, I joined the nonprofit organization Wishbone. Through Wishbone, I was able to attend Brown University for a summer program where I took a course entitled Probability and its Applications. Throughout high school, I was always focused on two things, getting into college and class rank. In order to achieve these things, I really did spread myself thin. I took a multitude of rigorous courses. I took lessons and assistant taught at my dance studio. I was in a pre-professional dance company. I had a part-time jo job, and I joined a multitude of, t of clubs. Excuse me. It wasn't until I got to Brown that summer that I was able to take a breath and really sit down and focus not on getting into college, but actually what I wanted to do when I got to college. Taking prob probability and applications led me to fall deeper in love with probability. It gave me a live look of what a college math class would look like and catalyzed my thinking of pursuing a statistics, math, or economics major. The week after I got home from Brown, I started my internship at Travelers. I work in boat yacht underwriting, but I work down the hall from a group of actuaries. One day, one of the actuaries emailed me because they had heard through the walls that I was interested in mathematics and possibly actuarial science. Since then, I have developed a close relationship with the actuarial team and have seen firsthand what their work and tasks, work day and tasks entail. The more I learn from them, the, the more I learn from them, the more I want to pursue actuarial science. But the reason I'm going to college as an applied mathematics major instead of an actuarial science major is because I want to keep my options open. I believe the workforce, specifically the mathematic field, mathematical field, is so broad and I haven't even began to see what it may have to offer. Though I loved what I've seen so far, I'm excited to see what is in store and where my career path will go. Besides my wishbone and internship experiences, there have been a lot of events that led to me being here tonight, most notably the support I've received from my friends, family, and teachers. Specifically, I'd like to give a few shout outs. Um, so of course, there's Mrs. Edge, who has obviously helped me get my internship at Travelers, but beyond everything that goes on in her classroom, she's always been a shoulder to cry on and somebody to make me laugh on my worst days. There's Mr. Jordan, who, he deserves a raise after what he's been through with me this year. <laughs> that poor man, he can't wait for me to graduate. And on the same hand, there's Ms. Golitz, who has also really had, has been a mentor to me this year, and I'm very thankful for that. 
And then of course my family, my siblings who have given me the motivation to work hard to get into college so I can move out. <laughs> my grandparents who have always been here for me and they always come to all of my events. Um, and also who drive me everywhere because my extracurriculars really would not be possible without them. And of course my mom who you have all heard many stories of over the past four years. Um, another person who's always been there for me and I know will always be there for me even though I don't like to admit it or show it. Um, but uh, without all of you, I wouldn't be the person I am today, nor would I have accomplished all that I have so far. And I know that with your continual encouragement and motivation, I will be able to achieve great things in college and beyond. Thank you. Sarah Fletcher is next. Hi, everyone. First off, thank you to everyone who has made this possible, because everyone enjoys a free meal, of course. <laughs> My name is Sarah Fletcher. I've lived in East Hartford all my life, kindergarten all the way up till now. Being in the school system has given me the opportunity to interact with all sorts of people and to grow as a student. We started off with honors kids in idea, fourth grade. We'd sit in a room and play like bananagrams and try to solve riddles, which I was terrible at. It took me a long time to realize that a whole, you can't have half of it, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm especially thankful for being able to come to the high school and meet all the people that I see today. We started from the bottom of being little and doing silly things and playing games to getting up to this point where you have to write a research paper for the last month and you're kind of panicking but you know you can do it. I'm especially thankful for being able to join band which I've been in since I was in fifth grade and right now I'm in the marching band. And over the years, I have worked my way up in leadership positions. And right now, I'm the flute section leader. And I've made some of my best friends in band. There's something about trying to learn drill in the sweltering heat in August that really makes you come together as a group of people. <laughs> I also want to thank Ms. Shaker, who I've brought here today, who has made our class interesting. I always kind of struggled in English because I'm more of like a reading books person than a writing papers kind of person. But she always made it fun to learn about books, but also talk about the real world, and also allowed us to have our many tangents, which some might not think is very productive, but I feel like we learn a lot that way and have a bigger view of the world. I'm especially thankful to her for editing and revising my college paper, which is very unorthodox and is probably the reason why I got into college. <laughs> Next year, I will be majoring in management information systems at UConn, and I'm ready to explore and try new things in life, like studying abroad and trying to meet new people, but I'm really thankful for everything we've had here. And thank you for everyone who's made this possible. Thank you. Next up is Nadelle Hemville. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Nadelle Hemville, also known as Natal sometimes. Um, good evening. It's so good to see you guys here. I hope you guys are all enjoying it because we've been looking forward to this for the past four years. Um, our guidance counselors know how much we came in the senior year asking, what's my class rank? Is it here yet? Why isn't it here yet? So thank you for <laughs> making this happen. Um, during my journey through high school, I've lost a lot of people, but I've also gained a lot more, and a lot of them are here tonight, and I'm so thankful for a lot of you. I'm glad that you have your own tables because you couldn't all fit at mine either. Um, the people that I have invited here today have been extremely important in my life. They have, um, they've pushed me to strive to do better. Um, and it's actually, it's just really great to like see you guys here and to be able to like 
it's just really nice. You know what I mean? Um, I've been in East Hartford Public School since kindergarten, and there is no other town or school I'd want to know. I've been cheerleading for the past two years of my life, and every time I go to a school, I'm a little biased. I'm like, hmm, it's not as good as East Hartford High. They should probably get a bigger field. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I love, I've love. i loved East Hartford Public Schools. There's no other place I'd love to be. Um, this school in particular has become home to me, despite me being here you know, for four years straight. Obviously, it's going to become home. Each adult that I have met here has to deal with my crazy personality, my mood changes, my impatience. And I want to say I'm sorry, but thank you for all of it. Um, each of you guys, even if you're not on my table, the people that I see here, the people that I've met, my friends, you've made my senior year a pleasure. You've seen me grow from an exceedingly small, like, teen to, and you're going to see me go into, like, a really weird adult, and I'm sorry about that. Um, you guys have seen me through it all since the beginning in my family, though they couldn't be here tonight. You guys are my family pretty much, so it's not, it's not, I can't finish my sentences, guys. I'm so sorry. I've been this way my whole entire life. Um, you guys have all made me want to become better for each of you guys, for my mom, so you could be proud of me. And then I want to thank you to my administrators, all of you. I want to thank you a million times for working behind the scenes and making my education an opportunity. And just, um, it's a possibility and just giving me the things that I have where so I could work hard to where I am today. Um, it's giving me the, it's given me opportunities and doorways I never could have dreamed of having no matter where else I would have gone. The school has become my home and like my home, I'd always, I'll always come back to East Harper High School, though I know many of you don't want me to. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, wherever life decides to take me, take me, I won't forget where I've come from. I won't forget my roots. I'm planning to excel as much as I can in Emanuel College in Boston. Um, you guys wouldn't let me do bad otherwise, so I thank you for that. Um, I'm planning to take writing, editing, and publishing degree at Emanuel. Hopefully win a Pulitzer Plot Prize, a few Academy Awards here and there. Um, and hopefully turn my future into something that you guys have made it possible. So thank you. Rizwick in a sentence. Oh, I gotta pick this up. Uh, hey everyone, uh, you all know me, Rizwick, but uh, I just want to start off by thanking all of my teachers, all of my friends, my family sitting over there at the table, just for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, celebrate our achievement with all these great uh, students, all my friends. Um, I just want to give a couple quick shout outs. Uh, I know you guys have heard a lot of shout outs tonight, but I just want to give some quick shout outs to my family. Uh, my brother and sister are probably never going to let me get go, let go of this, but I um, just want to give them a quick shout out. My sister, for being the oldest of us, of us three, uh, she was the first one to come up through the educational system. And she kind of set the groundwork for all of us. She uh, did her best in school, and she actually excelled in school as well. And she kind of just set that, that goal for us. She always wanted, she, uh, she kind of gave me someone to look up to, just to be the best that I can be with it, in school and out of school. Um, my brother, who is really not going to let me get, let go of this, uh, he actually is one of the guys that I look up to most in life. He uh, also excelled in school. And on the soccer field, he actually is attending UConn right now, plays on the soccer team. And uh, I know he's really not going to let me get like, oh, this. I kind of wanted to be like him ever since I was little. <laughs> I wanted to like, grow up and just uh, be a great, great person, a great athlete, great student, anything that I, can, I could be. Uh, Mom, I wanted to shout you out too. Now, grow, <laughs> having to live through the three of us growing up together arguing, fighting, couldn't have been easy. And now you're gonna have three of us in college at once. It's not gonna be easy, but 
Uh, I can't thank you enough for all you've done for us. And uh, last shout out, he's not here tonight, but uh, my dad is actually one of the greatest idols I have in my life. He actually, uh, he came over from Haiti when he was younger and uh, just to see how far he's come in his life, hear all the stories in his life, he actually came over from Haiti not knowing much, not even being a citizen. And looking at him now, he's actually a member of the uh, New England Soccer Hall of Fame. So he is probably the guy that I look up to most in my life. And uh, I know this is all about us being uh, one of the top, the top 20 students in our class, but I really wanted to focus on what made, helped me get through high school, and that was actually uh, sports. So with me, as many of you know, sometimes I, can al I can't always be the most motivated person. You guys, you guys know, you know, you guys know who I, how I am. But uh, sports has always given me something to, uh, to, look over, to look forward to at the end of the day. If I'm having a hard day at school, I always know there's going to be that practice where I might want to might want to pass out, but you know, better than being in school sometimes, you know. But uh, I just wanted to thank everyone here, my friends, my family, and last two quick shout-outs: the two people who actually got me through this senior year because I was really fe feeling that senioritis um, were actually my girlfriend Nana. She's probably going to hate me for calling her out, and uh, my my bro. <laughs> I call him my brother, but he's one of my best friends, Rojan. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would not have been able to get through my AP physics class if it weren't for this guy. Just sitting, sitting together, struggling, making each other laugh. <laughs> Mostly the struggling, but um, we got through it. And uh, I'm just so lucky to be able to get through high school and be part of this top 20. And I'm even luckier to be attending uh, UConn next year to be pursuing a career in biomedical engineering. So, thank you. Alyssa Lawrence. Hi everyone, um, I'm Alyssa Lawrence and my sole goal in high school was not to be in top 20, rather it was to get good grades, make new and stronger relationships and to have an overall experience that I could be proud of. So far, I believe that I've accomplished just that. I came into high school thinking it would, have, would be a breeze and everything would be just as good as middle school, but that was not the case. I could spend hours studying and still look at a math test like it was in Chinese, which I also took, but I only know the numbers. <laughs> I took honors chemistry and thought I could be a chemist right there and then. And sadly, AP Chem gave me a major wake up call. On the other hand, I had some of the best experiences over these four years. I got to go to Disney with the music department and was captain of an amazing badminton team, which wouldn't be possible without Mr. Martucci. And through the highs and the lows, I found motivation through not only myself, but the people I have surrounded myself with. So I would like to say thank you to my family and my friends and my teachers that have helped me on this journey. Thank you to my mom and stepdad for believing that none of my goals were too far out of reach and for being my chauffeur to many, many school activities. And thank you to my friends, those who are and are not here, for calming me down or making me laugh when I went to my soap opera-like dramatics. A special shout out to Hannah and Carlene, who are more than just my friends, they're my family. Thank you to the teachers and administrators who have helped me academically and those who I go to for just general advice or just to have conversation, especially Mr. St. Just and Mr. Verastro, who are here at my table tonight. Lastly, I would like to thank those who put together this dinner and give a big congratulations to the other top 20 members. It's well deserved. Thank you. Christian Garrett.
sorry. Uh, good evening, parents, faculty, fellow friends. Um, first off, I'd like to congratulate all of you on being here tonight. All of you should be very proud of this amazing accomplishment. Um, thank you for everybody for putting this together. It wouldn't have been possible without you, obviously. Um, coming into East Harbor High School, um, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I had been coming from the CREC system, and I had a, just a handful of friends. Um, but walking out of high school, I will have more than I could have ever dreamed of. I am the, one of the drum majors of my marching band. I am a four-year member of the Summer Leadership Institute uh, Connections Plus. I am the tennis, uh, I'm sorry, I am the captain of the tennis team. Actually made states today, so that's great. <laughs> but last but not least, I have, I have made a family here with every single one of you in this room, and I could not be more grateful for that. Uh, quick shout out to my mother and my grandmother who have helped raise me and supported me through everything. Uh, shout out to my girlfriend for being the best girl ever. My siblings, who are absolute best friends I could ever have. And last but not least, Mr. Martucci, for being my day one here at the high school and one of my best friends. Thank you all. Logan Satellino. All right, I might be a little louder because my grandma has horrible ears. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, I think she can. Okay. Grab on the fold of paper. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Logan Sadowino, and I'm very honored and proud to be the fifth ranking Hornet in class of 2018. I've worked very hard to be here. I maintained a 4.1 GPA this year, which is insane because senioritis is real. Um, I entered East Hartford High School scared out of my mind. I had no idea what to expect, and coming from a magnet school, everything was entirely different, including the people. Even the style of work, which was all computer at Two Rivers, coming back to paper again was a huge adjustment. Over time, I slowly figured out how high school worked, and I found myself thriving in East Harvard High School much more than I could have ever imagined. The school offered some really interesting classes outside of your general math and English that have always helped carve my path for the future. Taking AP Music Theory junior year changed how I viewed music entirely and got me into majoring in it. But the class that, I can't read. Oh yeah, but the class that really impacted my life path was human rights. I'm enrolled in the Early College Experience, or ECE, Human Rights class taught by Mr. Sparks and uh, the faculty I brought, Mr. Sweat, and learned things that were not only very informative and important, but extremely interesting. I brought with me today one of the human, I already said that, because <laughs> his class, along with Mr. Sparks, helped me realize that uh, what, all I want to do in life is help people. I will be majoring in international development and social change along with music at Clark University in the fall of 2018. Clark is a school that is very centered around community service and helping people in need, which fits perfectly with my passion for partaking in community service. After all, I did complete 400 hours. I plan on going to college with the same attitude I had through high school. School first, but don't be afraid to live a little. Because I had some of my greatest memories from East Harvard High School, like ripping my shoe in Mr. Melendez's class, um, uh, making an extremely cringy documentary in uh, history class last year, uh, remembering to teach Rojan how to open my car door, and um, even being on Fox 61 to um, represent the school on the gun control debate. So before I close this out, I just want to give a couple shout outs to people at my table. Uh, my parents, Howie Kay and Sarah Satz, for uh, keeping me through this all. Um, <laughs> My grandma, who's 98, and she still made it up here, don't know how. She means the world to me. Um, my aunt, who is also the best, don't count yourself out. And uh, Alex, my friend Alex here. Papa, I'm gonna miss you when you go to the Air Force. 
Uh, but, you know, I, I can shout everybody out here. I, I love you all. Um, you guys are all the best. Uh, so, you know, I'm really excited for what the future has to hold for me, and I'm planning to make the most of it. So, uh, cheers. Next up is Luz Vargas. I'm in a bit of a food coma right now, so just bear with me. Uh, hello, my name is Luz Vargas. I will be attending Southern Connecticut State University in the fall with an undeclared major. I plan to become a pediatrician and move to Florida to get out of this horrible northeast weather. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget what I've experienced through high school. There's been, there have been so many opportunities for me to help be successful later on in life. I would like to thank my parents, my family, best friends, Anisha, Alex, <laughs> and all of my teachers for helping me get to where I am now. I would like to specifically recognize Ms. Hackett today. During my high school career, Ms. Hackett would not only emphasize the importance of community service, but actually went above and beyond to make sure that I and other peers in my connections class had stellar grades. Ms. Hackett reminded our class about the importance of being a well-rounded student and always congratulated me on my achievements. I look forward to following her advice on things like how to wash colored clothes in cold water and to always put my academics first. Thank you so much for pushing me through these four years. <laughs> Our last student for the top 20 tonight is, and he's already standing, good for you, Rojan Samuda. Good evening. <laughs> is this is this good enough? My mom told me to be loud so she could hear me. Is this, you get, uh, oh yeah. Oh, sorry. I grabbed it. Oh wow, there's a lot that I can say. Um, first and foremost, let me give all praise to the Most High for allowing me to be here today. Um, well, wow, there's a lot that I could say. Uh, let me thank my family for being very supportive with their daily activities, encouraging me each day. The cameras, <laughs> stop. <laughs> um, yeah, I have an amazing pair of parents who have helped me through many challenges in my life. And um, I was here two years ago for my brother's dinner. And uh, it seems that we've switched positions. He's the cameraman now. <laughs> and uh, I, I look up to him so much. And I hope to be back in the next six years when hopefully Rory's here. Don't do anything stupid, please. <laughs> um, I had a speech prepared, so forgive me as I open it up. Forgive me. All right. So if you allow me to be begin my speech with a few statistics. Seven minutes, 57 seconds. 7 minutes, 44 seconds, 7 minutes, 35 seconds, 7 minutes, 17 seconds, and 7, 7 minutes and 6 seconds. These are all times for a one-mile run. Uh, summer of 2017, when I was enrolled in the Summer Leadership Institute, a, co a couple of my friends and I came to the track 30 minutes, 45 minutes before the program actually started to engage in some physical activity. Uh, and one of them actually set out a goal that they had. And uh, those times, he dropped a minute in his mile time over the course of, it must have been two weeks. And I was very proud of said friend for doing that because he had a goal to achieve and I wanted to help him to achieve that. And that showed me that you can never achieve anything all by yourself and that, um, 
good to have people around you, and I thank all the East Hartford faculty as well as the friends that I've acquired over the years who've helped me through my many experiences because high school is rough. And uh, that same friend, I'd like to say that a few hours ago, did something that the East Hartford community has never seen in quite a while. Yeah. Stand up, please, Christian. Thank you. You qualified for states in your doubles team, correct, Team Integration? Yes, sir. With uh, Ryan Lamb, who also participated in those morning runs. And I'm very proud of you for that, man. Like, honestly, kudos to you. Gosh. And even the friends that were there to help me outside of school, uh, be it my, uh, my junior year, getting those messages at 3 a.m. in the morning saying, uh, hey, did you do chem lab yet? <laughs> and uh, I said no, and I knew I wasn't the only one. I didn't feel alone. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate a sense of belonging that I've acquired. And uh, even when I felt very disorganized at times because I have trouble organizing things, I even had some friends who uh, took the time to uh, even look at my work schedule and plan out what I do each day. So uh, thank you to you for uh, being an amazing person. And um, whew, there's a lot more that I want to say. And even so, coming into my junior year, uh, I was never one to do homework on time. I was never one to start work on time. And um, a friend and I, the first three years of our summer vacation, wow, first three days of our summer vacation, we actually sat down over the phone and uh, banged out all of our chemistry homework together. Gosh, it was crazy. She often fell asleep a lot of times, but um, <laughs> I really appreciate you being there and helping me persevere through that. So uh, those are just a few of the things because many of you have impacted me in various ways and I love and appreciate all of you for it. <sighs> and then, Quite, quite honestly, one of the most memorable experiences in my high school career was towards the end of my junior year, where my English teacher, Ms. Cutcomp, I, uh, we had to do this spirit thought analysis. And at the time, I did face a tragedy, March 23rd of 2017, where I lost my grandfather. And I decided to do a presentation on him. And through that presentation, where I, I was able to share my own experience with the class and see their own experiences, it allowed me to turn a tragedy into triumph. And that's a very special thing that I don't think I'll ever forget. So thank you for allowing me to do that and opening it up to everyone else. So as I conclude this, uh, let me end by saying, throughout my high school career, I've seen a lot of people in a rush for failure and very few with the patience to succeed. So I, uh, I'd like to say, as you continue on, all the top 20, just take your time, enjoy life, and uh, I just know that all of you will succeed in your own ways. So again, congratulations. Thank you. Well, it's been quite a celebration, hasn't it? Let's give our top 20 our round of applause. Now, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves tonight. Let us just take a moment to thank the crew here at Rentschler for their hospitality and such a fine meal. We can't go away without thanking Annette Bacon, uh, the principal secretary for all she does to make this work tonight. 
We also want to thank her husband, Mr. Bacon, for all the work he does, and Mr. Campbell with the video and the picture taking. Thank you so much. You really all make this work so well. Now, folks, to end our program tonight, what I'd like you to do, we'll end it like we do a regular club meeting. We'll rise, and you will join me in the singing of America. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Guys, take it, folks, and have a nice rest of the evening. Mm-hmm.